Hi, I'm Sam and I work at British Exploring Society as a membership officer and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about Wilderstand but also planning your next adventure. Now, uh, just a little bit of background on me before I go into that. So I have been the membership officer at British Exploring Society for about going on two years now, I guess. Um, my background was in the commercial sector, uh, got thoroughly... Um, uh, dispassionate about the work that I did there so um, yeah basically decided that I wanted to change my career move into the outdoors so to do that I started qualifying uh, so I started uh, practicing for my mountain leader qualification um, uh, achieved that then went traveling uh, and uh, some expedition stuff with another organization uh, and then that brought me back to British Florence or so brought me to British Exploring Society where um, I have been in the membership officer role ever since and we will shortly be moving to the uh, expedition team a little bit as well. Wilderstand well, means the wilderness where I stand and we very deliberately wanted to name it to encourage young people to think about their surroundings and um, the places where they are. Um, obviously, COVID-19 put a lot of plans and scuppered a lot of things that people had planned this year. Um, but we came up with the idea of Wilderstand to try to still connect our young people with our inspirational leaders and to try to still deliver some sort of program. Now, what I want to say next is, I guess, to perhaps... Um, a few of the people that have attended uh, some of the Wilderstand sessions. I, I wanted to, I guess, ask what what have you done uh, since attending those sessions? Have you been out in your area? Have you been out to explore? Have you, I don't know, been looking for bugs in a churchyard, for example? Um, because you don't have to go to the wilds of the Canadian Yukon. You don't have to go to the Peruvian Amazon to explore, to have adventure, to uh, learn something. And um, hopefully through the, you know, the next stages of this video, I'll give you some tips and advice on how to start planning for that adventure if you haven't done it already. Okay, so thinking about planning your next adventure, awesome. Going to talk to you about three things here that will hopefully make that a little bit easier and give you a little bit of food for thought for the planning stages. So, first of those being team, the second being uh, kit, and the third, of course, being safety. Okay, number one, team. Now, I usually couple this question with um, location as well um, for the simple reason that the uh, the things I could take winter mountaineering for example I love uh, playing in snow and ice but that is not something that everybody is capable of doing straight off of the bat uh, so if I was to decide that I wanted to go and do a winter ridge, classic winter ridge in Scotland in February, that's not something that I could have just invite anybody to. Uh, I'd have to lean on um, my friends with experience um, and skill sets in using crampons, ice axes, ropes, all of that sort of stuff. So, um, you know, I'd encourage you to do the same. Think about... Um, what it is that you want to do, where it is that you want to go. Perhaps you don't know yet, perhaps you want to build the team first. Um, but think about any skills, knowledge or experience that anyone you invite might bring to the party. Um, might some of them be first aid trained, for example? Might some of them know how to climb and therefore are good with ropes and knots? Um, you know, whatever it is, consider, um, as I say, the skill set of those that you invite, but also match that against what you want to go and do. Okay, number two, kit. So presumably you know where you're going. Uh, you've got an idea on who you're going with. Uh, 
you should have a rough idea of what activities that you're going to do. Uh, walking, climbing, running, trail running, whatever it is. Uh, so then you have to start thinking about what kit you're going to need um, to get there, to perform the activity, to remain safe for contingencies. Um, and yeah, again, it's it's really everything about an expedition comes down to the planning. And I'm a bit of a geek. I love the planning stage. Um, not quite as much as the adventure, but I, I certainly enjoy it because I'm a bit of a geek like that. And you know, a little bit of planning can really go a long way. Um, so you know, think just think about: are you, are you going out for a walk? Could you potentially get lost? Might it uh, transpire that you actually have to spend a night on the hills, for example, because you can't find your way down? Okay, well, you know, think about um, uh, taking a sleeping bag, uh, an emergency bivy bag, um, you know, certainly a phone. Um, just just plan accordingly, depending on what it is that you want to do. Um, yeah, I guess, you know, that's all that I can say on that one, really. But what I'd recommend you do as well, um, I have uh, mentioned before that this is kind of a, a similar, along a similar theme to a blog that I wrote recently, which is on our website. So I'd recommend going and have a look at that. It goes into a lot more detail and kit. I won't bore you with that here and now, because um, there's just no need to. Um, but yeah, go to bridgeexploring.org. Uh, go to the update bit and then I think it's making your planning your next adventure or something like that and in there I talk about sort of you know the planning and the kit list for uh, theoretical as I'm talking here but also give a real world example of um, okay well I'm planning a kayaking adventure what to um, what to do uh, what to take for something like that so it'll give you a little bit more thought uh, a little bit more um a little bit more examples of the sorts of things that you need to perhaps consider and think about. Uh, to the team, we've covered kit and uh, saved the best for last, safety. Now it may be something that uh, you could think of as boring or just interested in, uh, you just don't want to consider it, but I stress, please don't take that attitude, um, just a little bit of planning can ensure that you have a safe uh, trip, can ensure that others around you uh, may, are kept safe as well. Um, and it, 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 it really doesn't take much um, to just ensure that everything goes smoothly. Um, so I'd stress, yeah, just, just give a little bit of thought and planning to what you're considering doing. Um, start small as well. You can always work your way up. So. Um, when I got into mountaineering, uh, you know, the first thing that I tried to do wasn't uh, the Lion Ridge of the Matterhorn, for example. Um, you know, I, you work your way up to things. Um, so if you're ever in doubt, just, you know, downscale your, your plans a little bit. Um, because, saying that I'd like to remind myself uh, of, sorry, there. The, the joys of filming outside. <laughs> uh, as I like to remind myself of, uh, the mountains will always be there. I won't. And that's important to remind myself that, you know, don't take stupid risks. I can always come back. So plan, plan accordingly. Um, start small as well. But also do do some form of risk assessment. It doesn't have to be pen to paper, um, but do consider the risks. Um, and if you are going out exploring, leave a route card. Leave it with a neighbour, a friend, a relative. Um, essentially just something telling them where you're going, what you're doing, what time you should be back at, what time to raise the alarm at if you're not back by then, um, and who to raise the alarm with. We're privileged in this country to have the amount of access to the great outdoors that we do. Uh, a lot of places in the world don't uh, have the same access. And whether you know it or not, that is actually enshrined in law. 
whether it's the Countryside Rights of Way Act uh, or Crow Act of 2000 in England or, for example, the Land Reform Act in 2003 uh, or the Right to Roam Act uh, in Scotland. These, these laws, these acts, enshrine in law our access and our rights to be able to uh, access certain areas, you know, in England, open moorland, uh, be it sort of mountains, heaths, moors, downs. Um, or in Scotland, the, the right to roam gives you access to practically every single uh, body of land or water, inland water. And, you know, some of, some of these some of these rights that we now have and take for granted were hard fought and won in some cases and that that's really important I think that we remember that because it reminds us of how lucky we are um, but also to look after the places and areas um, that we visit not just for ourselves but for future users for the landowners themselves for wildlife um, for a whole host of reasons, really. Now, yeah, so that access is there. Why not get out and use it? You know, start planning your next adventure. Start planning uh, what it is that you want to go and do. Um, you know, explore the wilderness where you stand. And tell us about it. Um, you know, if you're going out, out and about, let us know. Drop a Nemo. Uh, drop us a comment but you know please do get out there and start exploring your area where you are because adventure really is on your doorstep you just have to go and look for it welcome to Wilderstan um, and what I hear you cry does Wilderstan mean so Wilderstan means the wilderness where you stand and it's it's British Exploring Society's way of bringing the wilderness to you wherever you are in the world. Um, and what we're aiming to do is kind of provide some access and adventure, um, access to our leaders, a flavour of what it might be like on expedition. And, you know, especially in these times, what a bit like it's what to be out, be outside again in, in nature. You can follow me. What we're going to do is we're just going to take you down to the campsite that I've chosen for today. Uh, and show you some of the some of the things that we can uh, we can find in a in a good campsite. So follow me down here. The session today is just to try and introduce you to some uh, things that we might use on an expedition. So wherever you are in the world, hopefully some of the skills that we are going to look at today will help us to sort of orientate ourselves and answer that question: Where on earth are we? There's another reason for being in a churchyard in Cambridge, and that's because of a scientist that some of you might have heard of, called Charles Darwin. Uh, he was a student here, looks like a tiny little, quite vicious looking creature. I think my ladybird might fly away, there she goes. What we're going to do is now that he's coming across the river, we're going to launch another pole to make a decision on which way he should go next, because he can obviously, he's come to, you can see the, uh, the, the cross, crossroads he's come to on the path that he was just talking about. So I'm going to get you to do the same vote again um, and we're going to relaunch the poll now and tell me which way you think he should go next once he gets over the river. And they're disguised all along here um, and these are again very, very common. If you've ever tried to grow anything, vegetables and fruits in your garden, you probably know aphids. Well, now these are actual true bugs and that bugs are insects that have piercing mouth parts so they have like a sort of spiky tube mouth part so they can dig into a plant and um, drink all the sweet nectary juices out of the plant. I've got a suggestion how many people raise your hand if we want to see James get in the hammock? Who wants to see James get in the hammock? We've already got one hand up Two hands, three hands, James, four hands. Jay, you're getting in the hammock, James. Got all my, my trees, looks like perfect area. I could put my hammock up in. Good job. Oh, yeah, I'd be quite happy staying in there for the evening, especially on an evening like this. It would be brilliant. We're dead pleased with that. Tuck myself away for the night. Right. Good night.